There appears to be some division online, as there always is when you're dealing with topics like this, as to whether or not we are actually dealing with extraterrestrials, whether we are dealing with technology that is either friendly in terms of US or Western or whether it's China or Russia, or, or whether or not there is some presence of life that actually predates human existence here in this world. I mean, there's a lot of talk, isn't there, about whether or not Antarctica is some kind of base for uh, civilization that has been here a lot longer than we have. What do you make of that? Well, I think one point there is that none of these theories are mutually exclusive. Uh, it's possible to envisage a scenario where all of those things are true, that we have an extraterrestrial presence, that some UAP are attributable to um, secret prototype aircraft, missiles and drones, sometimes ours, sometimes from an adversary. And yes, even the idea, I, I think I've heard it called the, the crypto-terrestrial hypothesis, the idea that there's another intelligence that we share this planet with and, and that they're down there somewhere under the oceans, under the ice. Um, I think I, I'm a little bit skeptical about that because I think we'd have picked up more signs of them. And if they were that advanced, they'd have done things like launch satellites, that, which, which we could then detect. So, so I'm, I'm less sure about that. But having said that, when you listen to some of the US intelligence community whistleblowers, people like David Grush, they very careful in their terminology, and they use the phrase non-human intelligence. And, and the reason they use that phrase is that they don't limit this to just the idea of extraterrestrials, but they even consider things like, what if there, there are other hidden dimensions and something is intruding from, from one of those? Now, that sounds like science fiction, but, you know, the Large Hadron Collider, the big particle accelerator, uh, is, is actively looking for those sorts of things. So, again, yesterday's science fiction is today's science fact sometimes. There also is a lot of chatter from fundamentalist religious communities about what UFOs mean or about what uh, the potential for extraterrestrial life means. And it actually just tie in a little bit with what you mentioned there about the possibility of there being uh, other dimensions and that actually, you know, in some way, shape or form, some of the UFO presence that we may or may not be seeing are things like demons or negative spirits, etc. I mean, do you buy into any of that? I don't believe in demons myself, but a lot of people do. And, and certainly the Bible uh, talks about these things in terms of unclean spirits. And there has been, uh, is probably a faction still in both the US and the UK that thinks that some aspects of the UFO phenomenon are demonic. And one of their reasons for believing that is a passage in, in the book of Ephesians in the Bible that talks about Satan as being the prince of the power of the air. I think that it is undeniable that many of the world's great religions have in recent years started to think seriously and, and do some theological uh, debate about what the consequences would be of discovering extraterrestrial life. We know that the Catholic Church, for example, has issued a number of statements on this. One of them said that there's no doctrinal objection to the existence of aliens because, as they put it, man may place no creative limits upon God. NASA has quietly put in a bit of funding to theological conferences that have have talked about this and uh, in in one sense i don't know it's i don't know that it's because any of the the great religions of the world know this to be true i think it's more a case that they're hedging their bets and they're thinking if it's true they want to get ahead of the game this time and not get caught up in the sort of science versus religion dogfight that we saw in in the the middle ages for example with copernicus and and galileo